Hi, David Odell here with Odell Complete Concrete. This is part two of a multi-part series. Today we're loading up the job with the block for the walls, the fireplace. We're gonna build those, we're gonna stucco them. This is the wor our workout. Yeah. <laughs> Carrying blocks and walking up and down a hill. Yeah. <laughs> The good news is downhill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Any. That's true. I was just saying we, maybe we could recruit them and show them a new workout routine over here. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Well, you got a big job there. Yeah. This is our workout routine. Yeah. Well, see, you get paid for it. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, it's a win-win situation. <laughs> I'm kind of like a physical trainer, you know? Yeah. Personal physical trainer. What? Oh. I don't know. They told me once. No, they're le a little less than that. So, when you carry two, it's about 40, 35. You, you well, feel it. You're used to dealing with weights. Huh? You want to feel it? You probably know because you use a lot of weights. Uh, that's about 20, 25 pounds. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. Plus, that, that's rough on your hands. Yeah, that's. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> You, you met Tom, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my massive strength just tore the corner of the block right off. Oh, jeez. Man, that's... <laughs> Very impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was in, kind of interesting. Carrying those blocks up and down the hill. Now here's the dig out of the extension of this block wall. Now if you watched part one, you'd see how we got all this underground, the electrical, the gas lines, the drains, low voltage, the whole works. Now we're going to actually start doing the block work here. We're going to have two 12 inch columns on either end of this opening right here that we're looking at. So we'll have like a 42 inch oak gate. It's going to have, I think he's going to do a double swing on that. Then on the other end, to the right of that existing wall, we're going to extend that out a few feet and then turn it back to the house. And we're going to go up a little higher, a little more privacy. And then we're going to radius it down. So we'll show all that, the entire build of the wall, the grouting, the steel reinforcement, the epoxy dowels going into the existing wall and footings. So you get an idea how to actually build these so that they'll hold up for a long time to come. And it's a special treat because we have some uh, real master ma masons on this project. There's some of the underground that we just exposed there in order to dig that footing. Just a couple of the lines, they actually come up into the uh, fireplace area because they were going to do an insert back there in that corner fireplace insert ventless so that conduit down there that you see that's actually just sprinkler timer wire that's going to connect the front valves to the rear valves so everything will be off of one uh, control valve panel And what we have here is saw cutting the top of the wall. We're going to remove that cap so we have a, a starting point to bring it on up. That wall's coming up. This is the back of the barbecue island. Well, it's going to be, we've got to bring it up about um, three blocks, something like that, right here. Yeah, so basically they saw cut that so it can knock that cap off a little easier. That way we got a good starting point to add the new block from that point. 
and then we can go ahead and uh, drill and dowel rebar uh, into the top of the existing wall and bring it on up so on the, this corner is going to be the actual fireplace we're going to bring that up about three blocks three four blocks right there and then we have an insert that's going to go in So they're drilling about a good six inches in there. So that's how you clean the holes before you put the epoxy in basically. Here's the type of epoxy we're using, Simpson ZXP. We've got half inch rebar. You can see as it goes down, the epoxy oozes up from the displacement of the bar and you know you have enough in there. At the bottom of that footing, you just seen that quick clip that also has a couple dowels into it oh here you go you can see how it's doweled at the footing as well these guys these masons are real thorough I mean you know, this is their specialty Here we are just kind of coming off of the um, existing wall to make sure we're staying straight with that wall because what's going to happen coming down that hill if you were to approach this you know side yard gate you can see everything on the top so it has to line up with uh, the fireplace wall the new wall it'll be very visible and that's why it's crucial that you have to uh, start with a straight line There's your electrical coming across for a uh, future low voltage potentially. And then you have a, a backup irrigation line going across there. That's for your sprinkler system. So all the rebars tied in position ahead of time to that uh, horizontal bar at the bottom. The spacing is uh, designed to, you know, eight inch increments. In this case, they're going, it looks like uh, 24 inches. We have a little a mini laser level. See that on the end of the wall? That's just shooting a level line that you can actually see the laser beam on the rebar or on the string, whatever you need to use it for. Or when you hold your measuring tape up, you can see the red laser on the measuring tape. This wall's not going to tie into the house itself. It's matter of fact, it's not even doweled. We're not doweling that footing into the house at all. And we're not touching the wall because that's wood siding on that house. So that's going to have to be replaced periodically. And uh, we're not going to remove it at this point. So we're going to leave about a two inch gap there where the wall will end between the house and end of wall. There's your 12 inch columns. Here we are back on the island again. And this is actually the end of the island right here. It's gonna start from all the way back in the corner. At 
the whole front of the island actually is going to be stainless steel frame that's everything's going to mount to the tile uh, fascia and the um, granite countertop the back of this uh, island will be stuccoed to match that existing wall right there On the end nearest to us of the island, there's going to be an access panel right here that'll access your whole control panel for all your low voltage, um, your sprinkler timer, um, your water, your valves, everything's going to be in that panel. Actually, your water's not going to be in that panel. That's going to be in a different opening at the front of the barbecue. Yeah, so you'll notice they built the ends on those walls first. Because when you get your ends plumb of a wall, and then all you have to do is pull a string line from end to end. As long as your ends have already been plumbed, you won't have to use the level to fill the middle. You just keep bringing your line up. So as you can see here how he's plumbing up as he goes on that end so in other words once that's done all you have to do is pull a line across and your whole wall becomes plumb at that point without using a level in the middle area it's not real necessary this is a pretty short run so you could pretty much just freehand this whole package just with a couple straight edges On the front of the fireplace we'll have about a eight inch little raised hearth and then we have a three foot approximately three foot by three foot opening
This is an access panel over on this side. That'll get a stainless steel door on that. Then you can see that little notch out. A pipe is going to go through there for uh, the pulley extension cord through because it's going to have a receptacle in there. Now this 2x6 framing is just temporary support to build the uh, block going across this opening. You notice that first course is a bond beam. They've already notched the splits. They cut the blocks in half basically. Then they bond beamed it. So that means uh, steel's going to be laying in there in that trough to support everything above that opening. These columns, you may have seen one of my previous videos of the two stucco columns I did at the front of this house, smooth stucco. Well, these columns are going to be uh, smooth stucco as well. The rest of the wall is going to be textured. Also, the columns are going to have a nice cap on them. Precast concrete cap, bull-nosed. Here's the top of the wall. The reason I know it's the top is because you got the bond beam which was where the steel's going to rest in. Well, that's a course down, one course below the top. Double bond beam, first two courses. It's heavy duty. You notice how the block is stepped down right there? Well, actually, we're going to end up grouting this thing solid, and we're going to cut in a radius. So we're going to radius down to the lower level. Now we're just pulling that string line all the way down to the fireplace. Make sure it's uh, nice and lined up with each other. All right, back on the job site again. We'll do a little progress report, what we've accomplished to this point. Here's your uh, barbecue island right here. It's going to be a stainless steel frame setting in here in this whole area with all the uh, inserts. And uh, we're gonna lock it into the car. We're gonna have a raised pad down here at the bottom, three inch raise. Then the stainless steel frame will set on top of that. Then we're gonna have granite over the counter. We're gonna have a little backsplash as well built into the steel frame that's gonna be pre-made, prefabricated. And we just have to set it and then uh, mount everything to that. The fascia, the granite top, the whole works. And then on the bottom down here, down here on the patio area that's going to be all tile it's probably going to tile up and over this little wall right here that's an option this uh, face of this fireplace is going to get entirely tiled and the granite on the top is just going to be a flat piece and that's going to match the same same granite that's going to go on the um, barbecue island right here underneath this access lid is going to be for a mobile fire fire pit basically it's got a quick coupler in there with a valve so right here you could you know have a uh, little fire pit here and they're going to have some you know some chairs around here a small planter right along this wall you can see the stub ups we got there we got low voltage one's going in the other one's going out to the other planter right over here and we got your irrigation stub ups um the entire control panel for everything your low voltage lighting and uh your your sprinkler timer everything's going to be within this barbecue he may even do an electric water heater inside this island that's another option 
We have also water. That's your water. There's your drain for your sink. Your gas on it, I just have a temporary loop on that, as you can see, because it's under pressure. I like to keep them pressurized throughout the whole job site that way. If there's a break on anything, um, we'll know it right away. Rather than, you know, getting a break, you're turning it on later after the concrete's in, then realizing you have a break, it's not much fun going that route, but everything's under pressure. We have uh, all the sprinklers, water, we leave pressurized the whole time throughout the entire process so we can catch things, you know, before it becomes a real issue. Now over here, we got a couple columns with a new new entry gate. These columns are gonna be smooth stucco and they're gonna be a uh, bay ridge, so it's a light gray. The rest of these walls that we've added here, here's the caps that go on those columns. They're 14 inch square. And those bases, those columns are 12 inch. Over here on this little wall addition, we're gonna cut this block out. You know, it's gonna kind of go like that. So it's gonna have a little radius in there. And this is just gonna get the round cap. The stucco on here is gonna match the stucco on that wall, basically. Also, so we've got underground, we've got sprinkler wire all the way coming from the back valve and they um, tie in to the front one so everything is controlled off of one timer that's going to be positioned in that island barbecue island that's the whole package right here we can take a look let's take a look let's take a look inside the wall okay we've got a solid bomb beam across the top here and then we're going to solid grout it we've got some vertical steel in there Right here, we've got to notch this little block to drop, so this steel will drop down. And let's take a look inside. Here's the design over the top of the insert for the uh, fireplace. Here's what holds this all together. Right now, we've got some lumber in here supporting it while the blocks were drying and being set. But if you were to remove this wood right now without the concrete in there, it could just collapse potentially. So you got double double number four in there spanning across. That'll be all solid grouted. And once that hardens, you can pull the wood out and that will support itself at that point. Everything's epoxy down where we added over the top of the existing wall. You can see here we've got epoxy dowels in there. This will all be solid grouted right here. Coming across. This all is going to all get filled in. Anyway, but that about wraps up with what we've got so far here. Actually, we're going to be getting into the stucco at this point. So they got a mini shovel they used to scoop out onto their hawk there. So the block is actually a little bit too high for the island so they ended up cutting it down a little bit. Just snapped the line on it and uh, freehanded it. Right angle grinder. Now they're cutting out the block, the webs in between the block to run the steel and have a bond beam across the top.
on the rounded cap of the wall they actually have a, a, a rounded trowel that fits that curve. So if you notice how they built up that round area, they actually built it up most of the way with the actual concrete mix. Then they went with a mortar over that. And the reason you want to do that rather than just go with straight mortar on top, once you get over, you know, three quarters of an inch thick with mortar, it'll just crack up on you. So you got to build it up with your rock mix first. That pipe going through the walls also for a later date, he may want to pull an extension cord through there, you know, maybe uh, to light up the hillside or do something. Maybe he's doing some work over there. He'll have uh, electric on the outside to pull th in and out whenever he needs. The whole front of the face of that will get covered with tile. Now they're getting ready to apply the final stucco coat. This is the top of the fireplace area where the granite will set. So right now they're just leveling the top of it up. If you notice that little scooper that you did scoop that up there, that's the actual like quarter section of the bottom of a five gallon bucket cut out and nailed to a piece of wood. That's a nice mixing pail to mix your stucco up in. So here's where that scooper comes in that they made on the job. It's just a quarter, the bottom portion of a five gallon bucket nailed to a stick. 
they use that to scoop out onto that hawk. You notice on the preparation before they started applying this, they scraped the whole wall down with their trowel to get all the loose burrs off. And then, um, then they wet it, and then they're ready to apply the product. And they also dug out around the perimeter to go down deeper to make sure that everything was covered. Here's your initial texture. Then after this, you'll start uh, putting a, another texture over this. You can see the existing stucco, how it was put on there. That's the, what we're gonna be matching. Okay, you notice how he's applying that final product. He's just sporadically uh, troweling some chunks of the uh, stucco here and there just to give it that look. The walls match really well. They look like they've been there forever. Now this is that Bay Bridge from La Habra. It's a color, color stucco. It's the same stucco they use the white, but with the dye in it. So this is gonna be a real light gray when it when it cures out, take a couple days. So they're using a corner tool on these columns, which makes it much easier to get a nice straight edge. I freehand them personally, but that was a nice little touch they threw out there. Oh, and by the way, the winner for the DeWalt circular saw is Lane Shirtleff. Wayne, or Lane actually, L-A-N-E Shirtleff is the winner of the circular DeWalt saw. Here's the stucco, it matched really nicely. It just needs to be painted and it'll be a perfect match with the existing wall. These little pipes you see stubbed out here is for future access for whatever you might want to do on that hillside. There's your access panel for the gap where the gas valve will be for that fireplace insert. Ventless. Have a granite lid on the top, tile face. There's a little bit of the hearth. You can see some of the form work, but we're gonna show that in the next video, all the setup, how we did the setup, establishing elevations, the whole works. Also, we're gonna show the pour in the next part. Nice close up of the wall itself with that texture.
that AC is going to get moved when we do the pour. We just left it in there as long as possible. But now, within a couple days, the temperatures are supposed to drop. So we're going to be yanking that AC out temporarily so we can get a nice, nice slab in here without that AC in the way. Back here in the corner is actually going to be for a shed. That was one of the reasons for bringing the wall up here to kind of conceal that. And anyway, thank you for watching. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Stay tuned for part three because that's going to be set up in poor day. Have a good one.